It's March, which means it's Women's History Month. Go women! I thought this would be a good chance to introduce you to some historical women of astronomy that you might not be familiar with. That's right, we're going for some deep cuts of women's history. When it comes to ancient women in astronomy, you may have heard of Hypatia of Alexandria, and she was awesome. But you may not have heard of Aglonice of Thessaly, and she was also awesome. Around the second century BC, this woman was so good at predicting lunar eclipses that she actually earned herself a reputation as a sorceress who could make the moon disappear. I like to think that they were like, oh my gosh, you're a crazy woman, you're a witch, you're a sorceress. And she was like, ah, uh, yeah, you bet I am. And they were like, oh, dang, yes, ma'am. Very accurate historical reenactment there. <laughs> Anyway, not only did Aglonice know this, but she actually shared this knowledge with other women, creating this whole group that were known as the Witches of Thessaly. Aglonice was so good at astronomy that she was recognized by Socrates, Plato, and Plutarch in her time, and now, 2200 years later, we still remember her name. She even has a crater on Venus named after her, Aglonice. Jumping forward a couple millennia to 17th century Silesia, what is now Poland, and the woman Maria Kunitz. Now, of course, women at that time were not usually given much of an education, but both of Maria's parents were very well educated and they made sure that she was educated at home and with tutors. In fact, one of those tutors, Elias van Leeuwen, later became her second husband and encouraged her pursuit of astronomy. Maria is best known for writing and publishing the book Urania Propitia in 1650, in both Latin and German, Nadj. This was a book of astronomical tables adapted from Kepler's Rudolphine Tables of 1627, but improved via accuracy and simplicity. And by writing in both languages, not just Latin, she made the work more accessible. At this time in history, it was very difficult for women to do any scientific work on their own. The women who did so were often forced to funnel their work through male family members. And in fact, Maria did indeed do this when corresponding with other astronomers every day. But Urania Propitia was actually published under Maria's own name. And in fact, her husband wrote very clearly in the introduction of the book that the work was done by her and it was her work. Urania Propitia was a major accomplishment. It's been described by one modern historian as the earliest surviving scientific work by a woman on the highest technical level of its age. Maria has both a crater on Venus, Kunitz, and a minor planet, Maria Kunitia, named in her honor. One of the astronomers who Maria Kunitz corresponded with was Johannes Hevelius, and she was not the only female astronomer that Johannes knew, he was married to one. Elizabeth Koopman, born in Poland in 1647, was very interested in astronomy and in the well-known local astronomer Johannes Hevelius, whose first wife had died. The two married in 1663, Elizabeth was 16 and Johannes was 52. Being married to the owner of a private observatory, which was actually like one of the best in the world, allowed Elizabeth to continue her astronomical interests. Illustrations in Johannes's work show Elizabeth operating astronomical instruments, and she worked alongside her husband to measure and record a large catalog of stars and their positions. Johannes died before that work could be published, and Elizabeth completed and published the star atlas and catalog herself, though only Johannes's name went onto it. One contemporary mathematician called Elizabeth the first woman that he knew of who was not frightened to face the fatigue of making astronomical observations and calculations. Elizabeth has both a crater on Venus, Kortman, and a minor planet, Koopman, named in her honor. Another female astronomer of the 17th century was Jeanne Dumay, a Parisian woman who was born sometime in the middle of the century. Jeanne became a widow quite young at the age of 17 and seems to have studied astronomy as an adult. We know very little about Jeanne, but we know that she wrote a book which attempted to explain the Copernican system, which was still controversial at that time. Now, most of what we know today about the book actually comes from a two-page review of the manuscript that was published in a French journal in 1680. It's likely that the book itself never actually went on to be published, and at least one modern historian has questioned whether that manuscript contained any original material or if it was basically just an adaptation of earlier works. However, whether original work or not, Jeanne definitely wrote the book and she showed experience with using spheres to demonstrate and explain the Copernican model. Also importantly, her stated goal in writing the treatise was to demonstrate to other women that they are not incapable of study if they wish to make the effort because between the brain of a woman and that of a man, there is no difference. So perhaps Jeanne was less of a practicing astronomer and more of a science communicator. In any case, she was certainly very interested in astronomy, and her authorship of this book was used as inspiration to other women in science through the 18th century and beyond. 
Another woman who modeled the solar system inside her own home was the Chinese woman Wang Zhenji in the 18th century. Zhenji first began learning about astronomy as a child from her grandfather, and as she got older, she continued to teach herself not only astronomy, but many other subjects. As she became interested in eclipses, Zhenji set up a model in her own home using a table, a lamp, and a mirror to mimic the Earth, the Sun, and the Moon. She successfully used this model to develop accurate findings about lunar and solar eclipses. She authored several astronomical works, including articles on the precession of the equinoxes and lunar and solar eclipses. She also published and simplified work in the field of mathematics and was a skilled poet. In one poem, she wrote, Are you not convinced? Daughters can also be heroic. Despite the strictures against women at the time, Zenji believed that both men and women both could engage in learning and science, and she actually even had male students. Unfortunately, Zenji died very young at only 29, and much of her work has been lost over time. We're lucky to know as much as we do thanks to her best friend, who took Zenji's manuscripts and passed them along to another scholar. There is a crater on Venus named after her, Wang Zenji. We will probably never know more than a fraction of the historical women of astronomy, but what we do know shows that women have always been there, showing interest and aptitude in astronomy, though they were so often denied the education, the tools, and the collaboration they needed. I am so grateful to these women who faced such challenges but persisted to do the work that they loved and that I love. Happy Women's History Month! Bye!